Do you believe in love at first sight? Well, even if you do, Eric Hawkins might still have you beat. Hawkins was born in 1909 in Trinidad, Colorado. He then studied Greek civilization at Harvard University, and while in his early 20s, that's when he first discovered dance. So for the first significant portion of his life, he wasn't involved in dance at all. Then throughout his life, he was married twice, with the first wife being the Martha Graham. While at Harvard, Eric Hawkins saw a performance that involved two German dancers, the first being Yvonne Georgi, and then the other one being Harold Cosberg, and knew that is exactly what he wanted to do with his life after that performance was to become a dancer. Upon the summer after graduating from Harvard, he went to Austria to study dance with Harold Cosberg. Afterwards, he then came back to the U.S. to study and train for four years at the School of American Ballet. In 1936, Eric Hawkins met Martha Graham, who had her own extremely impressive dance company, and he was immediately drawn to her. So from the beginning, you already know he's kind of head over heels really easy. The very next year, Hawkins had choreographed his first performance, Showpiece. By 1938, Martha Graham invited Hawkins to dance as a guest on her production, American Document, which was one of her major productions, eventually joining the Martha Graham Company in 1939. He would continue to dance the male lead in a number of her works, and he was the first male lead um, in the Martha Graham Company. He would be the only male lead in the company for a significant amount of years, and even got to the point where some of her own female dancers quit because they were troubled by the fact that all of a sudden the male came into an all-female company. In 1948, he would eventually marry Martha, but then separate after two years in 1950, and eventually divorce by 1954 because of their own artistic egos. So in 1950, uh, he would try to explain to her uh, why they separated by writing her a 27-page letter and sending it to her. Um, I mean, at least he had other things to do besides dance. So in 1957, Hawkins formed an official company naming it the Eric Hawkins Company. Within his productions, he believed heavily in having live music with well-known composers and designers. Eric Hawkins would change the way of thinking around dance. He no longer had the traditional ballet where the movement represents what the, they feel emotionally. He was influenced by Native Americans, Greek classics, and very heavily with his uh, study of Zen thinking. With this, Hawkins wanted to convey the freedom of movement. He would swing his legs very high at his hips to create a lightness, as well as using all three sections of his spine to create different bends. Uh, these three are the cervical, the thoracic, and the lumbar regions, um, and they all have their own distinct bend to them. Uh, the cervical, that's going to kind of start at your neck um, and end right below your neck. The thoracic starts right where the cervical one leaves off and goes to about just above the middle of your stomach. And then the last one is the uh, lumbar region, and that kind of takes it all the way down to your upper butt, kind of. Um, and in a way, this kind of makes like a backwards S. So, in conclusion, Erica Hawkins was influential on modern dance and continued to be up until his death. He even ran his dance company uh, until his death at the age of 85. Eric Hawkins would receive the National Medal of Arts by then President Bill Clinton in 1994, one month before he died. It is the highest American honor of high success in the arts for the people. And just to see someone go for broke and study something they love although having no prior experience in life, uh, goes to show just kind of how far spirit can take you, and maybe we all should kind of be head over heels for something.